So we all know the devastating impacts of having no vaccine against a deadly infectious disease, Ebola. We did succeed to make a vaccine against Ebola and we deployed it in unprecedented speed. But even this unprecedented speed was not fast enough for many. You may know that humans can acquire Ebola from bats and apes. But what you might not know is that apes also suffer from Ebola. In fact, it's, it's a fatal disease. One in 10 gorillas survive following infection but we don't have vaccines against uh, Ebola for this species. Now, like Ebola, most emerging infectious diseases are acquired from animals. This means that there's an opportunity here to have joint programs for human and veterinary vaccine development, uh, but this is not currently happening. So I have pioneered one such approach for Rift Valley fever, which causes fatal uh, illness in the form of uh, epidemics in humans, uh, sheep, goats, cattle, and camels. There are no vaccines for use in humans, and those that are in use for livestock, they are licensed vaccines, uh, but they are fraught with safety concerns. There is need for better vaccines. Rift Valley fever was identified in Kenya, and there are several programs for vaccine development against the human and livestock indications, but these programs are, programs are separate. There is virtually no interaction between human and veterinary vaccine developers for Rift Valley fever and many other diseases. So my approach, which is to bring this together, is to develop one vaccine for use against Rift Valley fever in humans and animals. And it takes three main things. It's the same virus, so you can use the same molecules to make the vaccine. You can administer the vaccine using the same method. And because the clinical symptoms are similar across the species, look at the vaccine performance, but how well it prevents this across species. So what I did is take an advanced human technology uh, called Chadox-1 and inserted genes from the Rift Valley fever uh, virus into this platform and made the vaccine. This technology had not, had not been tried in livestock before, so it was all new for us. Remarkably, following a single immunization into all these livestock species, we found very good immune response, and in fact, the vaccine was able to prevent deliberate infection with Rift Valley fever. That's 100% efficacy. So where next? In the next uh, few weeks, in fact, in March, I will be immunizing hundreds of livestock in Kenya with a view to register the product in East Africa, and you know, then it can be rolled out in Africa. In parallel, I've got a single, the same product is going into clinical trials in humans in the UK and then in, the, in East Africa. This is unprecedented, very exciting. So of course, I think this strategy where you have one vaccine and multiple species is cost effective. You know, it's obvious that having one vaccine using it against multiple species should provide significant cost benefits. My approach has informed investment decisions. These are very costly when going into human vaccine development, manufacture, you need very good decisions. Testing my vaccine in naturally susceptible species has been very good for that. My strategy also accelerates progress. I used a well-established human vaccine platform and therein leapfrogged uh, technological hurdles and accelerated vaccine development in animals. I've received feedback from human and animal vaccine regulators, and this feedback has been mutually beneficial. Well, the biggest challenge is getting a commercial entity to fund this or to partner with me. By testing the vaccine and showing good performance in naturally susceptible species, I have de-risked the project. And in fact, with every species, the market size increases, which means increased investment returns. So I hope I've made the case that having one vaccine for multiple species is a good strategy going forward, and I've used Rift Valley fever as a, as a disease where such a, a strategy might be very good in terms of transforming the development of vaccine, uh, vaccines against such an emerging infectious disease. Rift Valley fever is not the only disease. There are many others, some of which you may know. Respiratory syncytial virus, it's an endemic disease in many places. You've heard of Middle East respiratory syndrome. You've got to take account of camels which transmit the disease into humans. This is a strategy that's applicable. These diseases are also very common in Africa, where we've got research capacity, but it's in desperate need for investment. I passionately believe that sustained investments in human resource capacity and infrastructure for vaccine research in Africa could transform vaccine development against emerging infectious diseases. And what better way than to take an integrated approach, taking um, human, va human vaccine research and bringing together veterinary research for the purpose of this goal.
Thank you. Au revoir.